I'm Greg Garbos of Four Season Tools. We just completed putting up a frame for this 30 by 96 V-Track tunnel with two positions. What we're going to talk about now is some of the different bracing that goes into both fixed and movable buildings. We're going to start with our sidewall corner braces. Over here, the sidewall corner braces go between the first, second, and third hoop in each sidewall. The sidewall corner brace starts at the bottom of hoop three and it goes diagonally up to the center point on the sidewall hoop of hoop two, and then it goes from the center of that same point all the way up to the first hoop. Where it lands on the first hoop is above the seam between the sidewall hoop and the roof hoop. So we were not able to put this brace in on the ground. With the V-Track tunnel, we built the entire sidewall on the ground, so we were able to put the sidewall corner brace in between hoop three and hoop two on the ground. And then we were getting ready to put up the hoops, we put the brace band on and, and dry fit the bolt between the, for this sidewall corner brace. That way when we put the end wall up, we can just pivot this up and put it right in place. It would help hold the end wall in place. You can take advantage of your sidewall corner braces when building your frame. For example, I like to put the second hoop up in the tunnel first. So after the sidewalls are supported up, I like to put the second hoop in because you already have a sidewall corner brace that helps support this hoop. Then I like to put the end wall in because when you put the end wall in, you can pivot this other sidewall corner brace up and you can, you can put it in place. When it's on the sidewall corner braces, it's important to make sure that the bolts, the nuts, are on the inside of the tunnel. You want to make sure that everything's always facing away from where there will be plastic. So we have a sidewall corner brace, one here, one here, that's two in each corner, so it'll be eight total for this structure. Sidewall corner braces exist in both stationary and in movable buildings. The next brace we're going to talk about is the roof corner brace. The roof corner brace basically goes to the same location as the sidewall corner brace. It is just up higher in the structure. So this roof corner brace goes from basically, this is called the shoulder of the tunnel where the bend is. So it goes to the shoulder of the tunnel, diagonally up to hoop two, lands in the roof. This one landed just below the short truss. And then it goes from the center point in two all the way up to the peak. When we install these roof corner braces, I like to install this one first. So we start at the peak of hoop three. The reason we started the peak of hoop three is because that way you can see when you put these two braces in that you put them for each side, you put them right up next to each other. If you start all the way at hoop one and you go up, it, these are probably not going to land exactly where you want them to. Since you have them right here and they're close together, aesthetically it looks nicer when they're both together. So when installing the roof corner braces, I like to start at hoop three all the way up at the peak, making sure to leave room for the cross connector and the ridge purlin. We put that roof corner brace in. It goes diagonally down and it lands in the center of the hoop here. And then the next roof corner brace, we butt right up against it and then we go diagonally down. Because the roof corner braces, the ends of the braces are flat and in the same plane on each end, when you come to this point where you're attaching the roof corner brace to the first hoop, I like to take a pair of channel locks. I like to flex it to try to make sure that this roof corner brace is inside of the hoop so that it doesn't interfere with the plastic. You can also tighten the top of it. You can hit this with a hammer or a rubber mallet you don't really damage anything, just to make sure it's flexed in. You don't want any of these braces sticking out where they can interfere with the roof plastic. Every movable high tunnel that's a 30 foot wide, we put in two roof corner braces. On stationary high tunnels, roof corner braces can be added with some of the truss kits, so it's important to understand what exactly comes with your tunnel. But for every movable tunnel, you will have sidewall corner braces and roof corner braces when you have a 30 foot wide tunnel. We're now going to move the camera and we'll show you a couple of the other braces. We're continuing to talk about some of the braces that go into a movable tunnel. This is a 30 foot wide tunnel with a sidewall height for 8 foot trellising. It has a truss kit in it, so that means it also comes with ridge braces. So what we're going to talk about is ridge braces. A ridge brace is something that sawtooths through the structure. A sawtooth means it has a zigzag pattern through the structure. Since we have roof corner braces in between hoops 1, 2, and 3, you don't need ridge braces between hoops 1, 2, and 3 because there's enough support with the other braces. So the ridge brace starts at hoop 3. So if you look all the way up here, we use a 1 and 3 eighths brace band and we secure the top of the ridge brace to the ridge purlin. It then comes diagonally down to the bottom of hoop 4 where it attaches to the collar tie. The ridge brace has perpendicular ends. It's an easy brace to figure out which one's which. There's only a handful of braces that we use that have perpendicular ends. If you look at a ridge brace, the ends are in 90 degree planes. That's so that it can attach to the ridge, brace, ridge purlin up here and it can come down and attach to the collar tie. It does attach to a 1 and 3 8 pipe down to a 1 and 3 8 inch pipe. It does that so that we have a lot of adjustment. 
there's no adjustment here at the, at the collar tie. It'll land where it lands. But up here at the ridge purlin, it allows it to slide back and forth to make sure that you get everything exactly where you want it. When you're installing the ridge braces, it's important to step back and make sure that the collar ties in each of your hoops are kept within the plane of the hoops. So the ridge purlin, I'm sorry, the, the ridge brace attaches to the ridge purlin at three, goes down to the collar tie at four. The ridge brace then continues up. It goes to the peak of five. Then on the other side of the cross connector, it goes down to the collar tie at six. And it sawtooths all the way through the structure until you're at the third hoop from the opposite end. When installing the ridge purlin, it's best to put the 1 and 3 8 inch brace bands onto the ridge purlin as you're putting it together. It's a lot easier to slide that brace band on first than it is to open it up and put it on after the fact. This structure will also have a collar tie purlin, which is not installed yet. So when installing your ridge braces, it's important to make sure that you leave room for your collar tie purlin. And that's how you install your ridge braces. We're continuing to talk about bracing in this movable high tunnel. We already talked about the sidewall corner braces. We talked about the roof corner braces. And we talked about the ridge corner braces. Uh, one quick note about the sidewall corner braces. Since this is a V-track tunnel, also fixed tunnels, they have two sidewall corner braces. If this was a pipe skid tunnel, there would be a third sidewall corner brace in each corner. That would be also between the first and second hoop on each side and parallel to the one that's above it. So it would be just like this one between hoops three and two. It would just be the same brace, but just lower than the first one we need between hoops two and one. Now let's talk about the purlins. The purlins are the, uh, the pipes that run the full length of the structure. In this structure, there are several purlins. There are a total of six purlins. So since we have tracks and we're on top of tracks, we need to have a sidewall purlin to brace the bottom of the sidewalls. So we have a sidewall purlin, and that's 30 inches up from the bottom of the sidewall hoops. We have one of those on each side that makes up two of the purlins. Up here, we've got a roof purlin. The roof purlin we put basically halfway between our hip boards and the ridge, and that supports the roof of the structure. There's two of those, and that takes up two more of the purlins. At the very peak of the structure, there's a ridge purlin. The ridge purlin runs all the way along the peak of the structure. Because there's a ridge vent on this building, there's also a ridge vent purlin which runs at the top of the ridge vent. Since there's a W truss kit, we have a collar tie right here. We have a single piece collar tie purlin which runs along the whole height of the structure, eight feet off the ground. We call it a collar tie purlin because it attaches to this pipe inside of the truss which makes up the bottom horizontal bar at the bottom of the W truss and that's called the collar tie. To make up the actual W of the truss, we talked about this when we built the trusses. Just to reiterate that, we've got a short truss here and a long truss. We have half of it makes a V on this side and another V on that side forming, uh, forming a W. Quick note about how uh, the purlins attach to the structure. If you look at the end walls, rather than it coming in and screwing in with a pipe strap, we've got two brace bands that go onto a purlin end. This one foot purlin end is flattened on one side and allows us to bolt the purlin to the end wall, making a much stronger connection. So we just screw that in with a self-tapping screw. When we run to the far end of the structure, we have to cut that purlin to fit so that it goes where we want it to. So that basically completes all the pipe bracing for the structure. Let's talk about some of the cable bracing. Since we have a movable building with this sidewall height for trellising, we also have cable X braces. They attach every 24 feet. So it attaches right up here, right at the 8 foot mark, and it makes a large X in the top of the structure. So every 24 feet there are two cable X braces that run the length of uh, from diagonally in the structure. They help keep the building square during movement. If you look over here where they attach, they attach using a 5 16 eye to eye turnbuckle so that we can tension them and have them where we want them. Since this is a 96 foot structure, there are four sets of X's in the structure, a total of eight cable X braces. Moving on to anchoring with some of our cables, right here we have an example of how we anchor to the V track. So we have a forged anchor eye at our anchor point inside of the track, and then we've got two cables that run up and down to the sidewall hoops. Those, that cable allows us to anchor the tunnel to the track, and it also acts as like a sidewall corner brace. We also like the fact that a single anchor point mounts the two different sidewall hoops. The track itself, you can see the top of these rebar T-anchors are driven down. So every 12 feet of the V-track has four 
about 30 inch rebar anchors holding it in. One subtle point about the cable anchoring is if you go over here in the corner, most of the cable anchors are attached using a forged eye bolt, which, which goes through the, through the sidewall hoops. Right here at the very, at the end wall, sidewall hoop, we've got a brace band. Since we don't want a forged eye bolt sticking out past our end wall, right here where we attach to our end wall, sidewall hoop, we use a brace band and a self-tapping screw to hold it in place. Also right here we can look at the outside of the structure and look at how the exterior anchors are taken care of. So we have another forged eye bolt that comes out from the bottom of the, the hole directly above the V-track roller. And then we have a yoke-to-yoke -yoke turnbuckle which attaches to our earth auger. This is a twist-in earth auger that's 40 inches long that's screwed down into the ground and this turnbuckle allows us to loosen or tension the anchor to the structure. There's an exterior anchor every 24 feet on these buildings. So we've talked about our sidewall corner braces, roof corner braces, ridge braces, our X, cable X braces, we've talked about our collar ties and our W truss, the cable anchors and the exterior anchors. There's a lot of different components. Let's make sure to put, it's important to put the right pieces in the right place. When they're all in, you've got a nice and strong, stable, movable structure.